book is 9 by 21 or 22. It's actually 21 and a half by 9. So our return is 800 CFMs. It's just right for 2 tons on a return. See it? 800 CFMs. So the return is just the proper size for two tons. That's what I'm using. Let me sort of that joint there. I'm going to do one over there next. <clears throat> Looks fine. Alright, the only thing with these joints, if there's a little slack around them, sometimes you got to squeeze it. It's not the greatest. stuff but it works it's got a high silver count stay bright eight if there's any gaps you gotta kind of squeeze it with the pliers and resolder it gotta check it good it's just as strong as the brazing It'll be fine what I like about it you don't have to purge don't look like it took put a nitrogen charge on anyway and check everything so it shouldn't be an issue. Right, so I brought the thermostat wire in here. It's only air conditioning so it's just um, common. Common coming out here in the yellow wire to pull the contactor in. I got the, came in from the house. I'm going down this whip 220 to feed this contactor. So on this common and yellow from the thermostat pull in just pulls this relay in sends power to the unit just gonna pick up all my stuff here and go inside and connect the um, AC lines inside in the dryer should be ready to go Also covered up this is a big giant hole here I put some tape on there to try to cover up that hole so no mice would come in here I mean I could stick my fingers right in there kind of a bad design Thirty-five five on a one cap I usually like to put the date
Get over here on that thing. Should get a little douche out of it. That's a good sign. You know, it's holding pressure. You don't get a douche out of it. Oh man, you're gonna be in trouble. So this has got a TXV in it, so. some street elbows that I brought. Expensive little buggers. I got some nice uh, street elbows I brought here so this will work all good here on this. Greatest for filling in gaps. It's not the greatest for filling in gaps, like I said, it is it is what it is. It's good enough for this neighborhood, that's all I could say. You gotta be careful because the stuff will, cause stuff cracks easy if you wipe it while it's still hot. It might be an issue. We're gonna chest it with nitrogen anyway, so it right? should be fine. Should be. We'll find out. Gotta look at the gauges when you when you're turning them on. Over, you know, directly in in. Three hundred pounds or something. It's dry nitrogen. I'll shut these off. It's probably stabilizing. You had a week, you'd be hearing it pissing right out of there. The 
I'm going to have to hit and check for leaks. Nothing's carved in stone here. Nothing's carved in stone. We're getting no leakers. We're no leakers, mama. We don't want no major leakers. You got a leak, you'd see it, and it would blow right up. I'm looking. I think I'm good. I'll be able to pull. We'll get a good vacuum pulled on it when we know it's good. Alright, so I got these angle shut off so it pushes into this presser so then I got one of three eight hoses one of three eight hoses up to the Y here and I'm putting my uh, micron gauge right there which is not the best place for it but it will work just gonna pull a good vacuum on it and what I could do is I could um shut these ball valves off and open the valves so I don't douche my pump right Push my pump and my gauge. Alright, guys, so I put a new filter in there. Reinforcement goes towards the fan. I got an extra one there for her. The other one didn't look bad, but I'd rather run the other filters. I did tie in the um, expansion bulb right there. Did put this easy trap in so if it fills up with water it'll shut off. And I'll put the condensate pump there. Tied this in here. Don't need a P trap and this can come out. We can look in there if we have to and let's just hand tight. I did put a new pump in there. I pulled a little cardboard out. So this runs over over there. The yellow is gonna, this is gonna break yellow going out to the condenser. So there is a thermostat wire. There's a two wire thermostat that goes out to the condenser right here. Okay. The yellow from the thermostat comes over to this parked yellow right here. Comes over to this yellow which is outside condenser. And I tied this black wire in to the yellow. Up to the float switch, back to going out to the unit the condensing unit and then the other leg going out to the condensing unit is the common so you got a common and then you got the yellow going out to the condenser you got the white which is heat you got the green which is fan and you got the red which is power going up to the thermostat and of course for cooling the red the green and the yellow come back on cooling yellow pulls in the outside condenser and you got the common going out there to give 24 volts. So we're breaking it. We're breaking the yellow through the float switch. Okay. All we're gonna do is um start the unit up. Vacuum's all pulled. We just have to. We just have to open them valves outside, and uh, we could run it. Check our charge. I have to separate, separate by subcooling because it's a TXV. But it's warm enough to probably check it.
Something's weird about it. Something's weird about that, that key. not be weird. Never a dull moment, Mom. It's not crazy cold, but not crazy hot, but we're gonna run it anyway. Cooling. Let's check it. Fan you know, on, I think I gotta turn the unit on downstairs. Good. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, for some reason, if it gets windy, it blows right in the corner there, right? So we're at 100 there, but we're gonna add, see if we're at 05. We'll be around nine with the sub cooling. So we're gonna add a little bit. 10 Upside down, the line purged. Give it a little, give it a little bit of Gundy here. We're gonna charge by superheat, uh, sub cooling because it's a TXV, right? We'll bring that up to about nine. You want to overshoot it? Add a little bit and let it stabilize. It's going in as a liquid because it's a it's a blend. I said it's not really that hot today. It's probably only like 60 degrees outside. We really need to check it on a warm day. It's best to have, it's just to check it on a warm day. You know, 75, 80 out. The um, smart tool needs new batteries. I tried to start it up, the batteries were dead I'm sitting on with them. You know, like I said, it's a cool day outside, so on a hot day, that 105 would be higher. Right around 11, 12, sub cooling. Soup heat's 10, the TXV's regulating. That's gonna be it right there, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna leave it right there. On a hot day, that 106 will be like 115, 120, something like that. It's going to be above 100. That's it. I put two pounds in it. I had to add two pounds to it. The 50 foot line set. Well, 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 hello there, Miss Molly. Well, hello there, cutie pie. Alright, let me just pick up. We'll get out of here. It's really not even that warm out, but it'll be alright. 
I like to check the charge on them units, you know, especially before 10 a when it's warmer out. But it was it was warm enough where I could check it. Oh, maybe maybe 60 degrees, 58, something like that. Out. She's all ready to go now. I mean, the return the returns and supplies. I didn't touch any of that stuff. I left all that stuff alone that was in the house. Had six inch. Um, smoke pipe going to all the registers which is better than four inch but I didn't touch any of the duct work I left all that alone and uh, I might have been get been able to get by with a one and a half ton but it was kind of like on the fence you know so especially if you're blowing up like that you're better off going a little bit if you're on the line on a fence on an old system like that I feel like give it a little bit more to put the system in then on a real hot day I can't keep up you know I mean you have to be careful you don't want to oversize AC but you don't want to undersize it either so I could always cut more returns in if I had to over there Miss Molly oh Miss Molly yeah you love daddy you love daddy you love daddy I know you love daddy you love daddy Miss Molly